You don't know who could have the virus. My mother and my stepfather both tested positive. This thing is moving at a rapid rate where it's killing people very quickly. The global coronavirus has made its way to the United States with a confirmed case. No back Our lives is more uh, important than money, right? Wow, I can't believe I have it. It's been a big impact on my family. When it hit San Antonio, I was just really nervous. My business has 100% been affected by this. from schools were to suspend classes in person and begin teaching online for the remainder of the school year. This was the same approach that all districts took when COVID-19 cases first emerged. I think they did the right thing to protect the children and people because we didn't know at that time the magnitude of the pandemic. Kids especially need each other. They, will, they learn through play a lot and individually and socially. And I, I do hope that this pandemic um, subsides and, and we get a good vaccine so these kids can go back to school in person, uh, but not at the expense of their lives, of course. The kids are very resilient. So the likelihood is if they do get the virus, I mean, they would be okay. But then you see several cases where um, kids bring it home and then, the, you know, their parents end up losing their lives to it. Or The parents are, are feeling the fear of having their children return to class in person. Uh, we know that we are still at level three phase and it is going to be very difficult to deal with the fear of returning to a normal life. I won't, I won't be sending my kids back to school. I mean, I, I don't want to expose them with so little information on the virus, even at work. Um, I've seen kids, I've seen, you know, newborns, I've seen kids, my kids' ages admitted with the virus and doing not so well. Schools being open in the fall, I know it was a big hot topic right now, and I think that would be a huge mistake. Now the cases are surging and, and we have the deaths are, you know, much higher. The infection rate is much higher. The cases are going up, but hospitalizations are going up as well. Local hospitals approaching capacity and new testing guidelines set. Where Texas Medical Center alone is reporting more hospitalizations on a daily basis than the entire city of New York right now. I think because of the shortage of PPE and all the protective equipment, um, hospitals tried to help us um, and help everybody overall as much as they could. But the fact that we didn't have all the equipment that was necessary uh, was a little difficult. So for sure, hospitals were not prepared, but somehow uh, what I saw is that hospitals were borrowing from each other and helping each other in that way. 
So no more meeting in person, um, no more confined spaces. So we did that prior to even um, the orders coming out of, of, you know, no gatherings of 50 or more. No, so we were already doing the, uh, the social distancing, um, providing masks to all the inmates, providing masks to all of our officers, providing shields to all of our officers, uh, gloves, um, and then, uh, of course, testing. So we were actually the first to, and the, I believe in the state of Texas, to test all of our staff as well as inmates immediately. We were both very cautious and respected the policies that had come out. As soon as they lifted, we did give clients an option to see us in person or via telecounseling. Our crews were really having to try and innovate. So instead of doing interviews in person, we were having to do them over Zoom or Skype or find ways to stay socially distant. I would say that I think across our newsroom, um, really having to pull our resources and be creative in how we tell this story while also trying to be safe. And that's a challenge. We even offered as a way to help as a practice, like really discounted rates. We offer like 50% discount sessions just to help people go through whatever they were going. And there were a few people we were seeing that unfortunately lost their jobs. And of course it is overwhelming to, at a time like this, to lose their jobs, to know, you know, be added stress to what's already, already stressful. It was difficult to finish online rather than in person. This was because of not seeing my students and everything that happening at that time was like a shock. Even though the students demonstrate to have reached the desired academic level that we want, um, it was really hard for us as a teacher, not wishing them the best for the next school year in person. It was really hard. I mean, for me, it was, Terrible. Texas reported 164 new coronavirus deaths today. Out of every eight people tested for COVID-19, at least one is positive. Our hospitals could be over capacity within three weeks. You know, one of my friends had a headache and she went to go get tested and she was positive for COVID. I had another friend that um, unfortunately was on a ventilator for a couple of days and fortunately has recovered fully um, to back to normal. So it's really on a case by case basis. You know, if you test positive, will you test positive again later? How long does it take to become negative? Um, you know, can you get it again? Is it, are you immune once you don't have it? So there's a lot of unknown, so we're trying to uh, adapt as, to, as quickly as we're learning about it. One of our, our good friends uh, and his wife got it. Um, somebody in our office got it. Like we've, we've had plenty of people get it, and when we have, I think that's when we've really ratcheted down. We've gone and gotten tests. We've got a negative test. We felt better. Recently, my mom sent me a text message um, from my dad saying that there was one coworker in the department that was experiencing symptoms and it was very alarming because my dad is reaching an age where he's about to retire. It's kind of hard because my dad also has high blood pressure and he's basically the rock of this family. If you have parents of a certain age, like they need to be you need to have caution for them especially. And my mom is my whole family. She's my life and she is 79. And it, I just was really scared for her. And then it was like, well, can I even go talk to her? Can I go hug her? No, I can't. Obviously, as we know, the older community is more susceptible to getting the virus, getting sick, and you know, obviously the death rate's higher. So. We've been very, very, very cautious with this whole thing and taking it very serious because we don't want to get our family sick and we want to be able to see our family. I mean, they were saying that not so much, it didn't affect young people. They were seeing a lot of people in the 40s, 50s, maybe 60s, but we also took care of a 20 year olders. So they were really all ages, not so much children, but it was just really young adults up until 70, 
and all nationalities, all complexities, all different, you know, color, skin. It didn't matter. We, we saw everything. Yeah, I heard about some cases in San Antonio, but I just didn't think it was, you know, it was as bad as it, you know, has been. You know, I didn't think it was going to spread that fast and definitely didn't think I would be one of the ones that would get it. So it was kind of crazy that I got it. So, and that, you know, that he got it too. But I do have coworkers in the police department that have been uh, tested positive for COVID-19. One of them almost, almost died. So uh, uh, he was in the hospital for two or three weeks, you know, had intubation. So yes, I've had people affected. Luckily, thank the good Lord, uh, we, our family has not. I don't think hospitals were prepared and they were not equipped to provide us with the equipment that we needed. And not just the protective equipment, but also machinery. We needed ventilators. We ran out of ventilators. We ran out of um, IV infusers. I noticed it when I started with the fever. It was like a low-grade fever, about 99. So I went ahead and, um, you know, I kind of had a little bit of body aches. And, and so I went ahead and took a Tylenol. And then I was fine, you know, the rest of the day. I was fine the rest of the day. So that went on for about, you know, four days. Well, I never really knew I had it until I actually had my blood test. Uh, I had a lot of pressure in my head. I had headaches. I had uh, dizziness. I was very lethargic, very tired most of the time. The last four days, I was really wiped out. I was really down and out for most of that time period and didn't have any energy, didn't want to get out of bed. I had a headache, my body was aching. I had the chills and I was sweating, you know, so I I just didn't, I did not feel good. And my body was just so sore. I it was just exhausting to get up at, out of bed. My mother and uh, my stepfather both tested positive uh, for the virus and uh, are in the hospital actually fighting for their lives right now. You know, it's, it's really heartbreaking to see your family go through something and you can't be there. You can't like be there to comfort them and console them. You know, she's in good faith and um, definitely feeling, uh, feeling like she's gonna pull through it and everything. Being away from the family and not being able to visit and enjoy places with them uh, in addition, seeing the suffering of many people having lost their loved ones without giving them a hug and a kiss goodbye, it has been very, very sad. The fact that we don't really have a remedy per se, uh, the fact that it's so contagious and so mortal, I think it's what makes this virus so dangerous. You know, after five days of having a fever, you know, then we decided to get the test and and it was crazy to get a call two days later to tell me that I was positive. I was kind of surprised. I was like, wow, I can't believe I have it, you know? So it was kind of, you know, it was kind of shocking that I had it. So, and I didn't feel terrible at that point. So I was kind of surprised. I wasn't scared because I wasn't having a hard time breathing. I guess if I'd had a hard time breathing, I probably would have been scared. I don't know if you've been tested for COVID-19. It is the most painful thing you can imagine. So yeah, I tested on Monday and I didn't get my results until that Saturday. It took a full seven days. You know, with a few exposures, had to go into quarantine, um, even myself at, at one point. Um, but I've been tested, I've tested negative twice. Um, and I, I think I'm gonna do another test just to make, to see if I have like the antibodies and everything like that. It is getting closer and closer to us. Um, one of her deputies passed away and last week um, a gentleman our emergency management coordinator, Kyle Coleman, that I used to work with almost every day, he died of COVID. He was very good at what he did and he like did so much for the community. And when I needed to get tested, when I thought that I was sick, he, you know, got an appointment for me. I drove out and got tested. I mean, that's how great he was. And it's, we, we work for facilities, so we cannot work from home. We have to, we have, 
maintenance staff at the jail and at the courthouse that have to be there 24 seven, you know, and some of them are starting to get positive. And it's, it's if one person's sick in the, sh in the shop, then everybody's sick. In the last two months, I have never seen so much death and chaos in my life. It was painful to see people dying alone with no family members because they were not allowed so that we um, wouldn't expose them to anything. So that was by far the most difficult situation, seeing people die right and left with no family members to the bedside. And also seeing how quickly this was spreading. Within days, we will have patients just getting the same, the same pattern, getting respiratory distress and becoming very sick. And then the majority of them dying. 